בהרצאה הראשונה שאנחנו נשמע, בהרצאה הראשונה שאנחנו נשמע, אנחנו נשמע על uh, ה-F35. אני מניח שמוכר פה לכולם, ואם uh, להתעלות באילנות גבוהים, שיסלחו לנו על השימוש באמרה המפורסמת, אז uh, אני חושב שבמטוס הזה מתגלה משהו ש... אפשר לתמצת אותו כמו, הם מעולם לא דיברו רבים כל כך, דברים רבים כל כך על מטוס אחד כל כך. <laughs> והמטוס הזה, ה-F35, מכונה כמובן בז'רגון המוכר, מטוס קרב בין הדור החמישי. לטעמי, ואני מניח שגם לטעמו של הדובר הראשון במושב, לא כל כך נכון לקרוא לו מטוס. וגם לא בהכרח מערכת, זה משהו אחר לגמרי שמחייב שינוי תפיסתי אה, מהותי בחשיבה על הפעלת הכוח וניצול היכולות המיוחדות שיש במטוס הזה. המטוס, או המערכת, ה-F35, אה, ממצה בעצם את היכולות המיוחדות של מדינת ישראל, ששאפה תמיד לפתוח פער איכותי גדול ככל הניתן בתחום האווירי, גם בתחומים אחרים, מול מדינות אה, האזור. המטוס הזה מבטא בין היתר גם את היכולות המגוונות מאוד של המדינה בתחום של אה, אש מדויקת ומערכות שונות שיותקנו על גבי המטוס. על מנת אה, לעסוק מעט בנושא ה-F35 ותרומתו לעימותים סימטרים. אנחנו נשמע את דבריו של סטיב אופריין מחברת לוקיד מרטין. הוא סגן נשיא בלוקיד מרטין ואחראי על הנושא של פיתוח עסקי וקשרי לקוחות של ה-F35, כל המדינות שיפעילו את המטוס הזה. נאמר על המטוס שהוא מטוס הקרב המאויש האחרון, ולאחרונה היו גם דיבורים שמטוסי קרב מאוישים, אנחנו נראה אותם גם בעוד הרבה מאוד שנים. אז בוודאי מובטחת לו עבודה לעוד אה, הרבה מאוד שנים. אה, אובריין הוא טייס קרב אה, לשעבר בצי ארצות הברית, הטיס מטוסי קרב מסוג F-18. אתמול ב- בערב אה, למדתי שקצת הוא אפילו אה, הטיס את ה-F-14. עם יותר משלושת אלפים אה, שעות טיסה על מטוסי F-18, השתתף במגוון רחב מאוד של פעילויות מבצעיות. ובין היתר בגל התקיפה הראשון של ארצות הברית בעיראק בשנת 2003. הוא מוסמך למינהל עסקים, ובין היתר פרט מעניין, הוא גם בוגר בית הספר המתקדם של הצי ללוחמה אווירית, שאותו אנחנו מכירים בתור טופ גן. So, סטיב, uh, please. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'd like to take you through today some of the, you know, where my background is. So it, it, as I look to the future of symmetrical conflict, some of the givens I have. First is it's going to be a denied access environment. So every state actor is probably going to be able to invest in surface-to-air missiles or, or certainly fourth-generation fighters to deny access in an integrated air defense. The second, from an air-to-air point of view, Um, to me, in the air-to-air point of view, the visual engagement arena is driven now by high off-bore sight missiles. And it's an incredibly lethal environment. And in the air-to-air regime, what you want to avoid is any within visual uh, engagement or dogfighting. Uh, the second on air-to-air to me is we can no longer rely on that we will have a numerical advantage in any kind of adversary conflict. In the air-to-ground regime, um, as I look at it, what's happened in, in assuming the adversary is smart and they learn from the past operations that we have, every target on the ground will be mobile. If it's not mobile, it's likely to die on the first day of the conflict. Uh, the second from the air-to-ground uh, regime to me it is the fact that I, I never really like doing suppression of, me, suppression of enemy air defenses or seed operations. To me, it was deed operations. If you came in and you found it, you want to destroy it. And, and finally, big kind of picture is that we're dealing with financial constraints in all Western economies in the world. 
So if you buy a fighter, it no longer can be air to ground or air to air. You know, we really have to redefine a multi-role fighter. It's got to do much more than that. So that, that's why we created the F-35 program. And what I'd like to take you, you through today, in, in my opinion, why F-35 with those different, call it the strategic settings, is the right answer for Israel and Western fighters going forward. Carl, if you go to the first. First, to me, stealth is integral in, in how do we design an airplane. Uh, we tried to retrofit it on F-16. We, we did our best, but we really made no, no, no discernible impact to the operational signature of the airplane, despite reducing it quite a bit. So it had to be designed in from the beginning, if you go to the first. Things we realized is you have to put the fuel internal to the airplane. Um, the F-35A for Israel is going to have 18,500 pounds of fuel compared to an internal F-16 is only 7,200 pounds of fuel. If you go to the next, the, we have to fix the array because a mechanically scanned array antenna is a huge radar cross-segmentation hit to any kind of fighter airplane. If you go to the next, for engine inlets, what we learned was the rivets in the engine inlets are also a big radar reflector. So the F-35, the inlets are all composite, so there's not a single rivet involved in the, in the construction of the inlets. And, and you also have to hide the engine. Spinning titanium blades are a big radar signature. So for the F-35, you can actually put your head in the intake and still have no, no view of the actual engine in the F-35. Finally, we have to align the edges. So not only are, are the edges aligned from the leading edge of the wing to the leading edge of the horizontal tail, but actually the, the fuselage is aligned with the vertical tails, and the, the angles associated with the inlet are, are also aligned with the uh, horizontals. So not only can we isolate a spike, but we actually can mitigate um, the return of, of energy to the, uh, to the adversary. And we've got to embed the antennas. So everything has to be flush mounted from the electronic warfare gear to the, the, the targeting pods to the jamming pods to any of the antennas has to be flush mounted to the airplane from the beginning. And, and finally, the, the rear quarter. Um, I've found, as many in this room have found, is when you drop a bomb on somebody, they tend to get angry about that. So it's not only ingressing to the target, but you need to egress as well. And those mobile targets, since they move around, you don't know where they are, so it's not enough to be stealth in a tiny quadrant of the airplane. You have to have all aspects stealth. And then finally, you've got to carry your, your stores internally. If you do all these things and you don't carry the weapons internal to the airplane, you're going to compromise your signature and you're going to undo all the effort, uh, all the level of effort to reduce the signature. It has to be designed in from the beginning. So that's what we knew on, on the F-35 that we couldn't do to the F-16. And those attributes have to be present from the beginning in the design of the airplane, and that's what the F-35 does. So w when we look at it, it, it's not just the stealth, but, but it's different qualities of it. So when you see the comparisons up there of an F-16 and an F-35, um, you can see the big thing that takes you is this amount of fuel in the F-35, 18,500 pounds and the same amount of ordnance that you see on a fully loaded F-16 there today, about 5,200 pounds of ordnance. But what we know in a new symmetrical environment, build one, is that F-16 is not going to be survivable. It's going to be either high risk, you're going to take high losses, or you're not going to accomplish the mission, or more likely, all three of those. But the F-35 can take you to, to different, it's a flexible alternative. Because again, you can't be just one element of it. You can't be just the first four days of a conflict. You have to provide a sustained approach to a, to a, a level of effort to support the troops, cast missions. And only F-35 gives you 18,000 pounds of ordnance. The flexibility to transition to a more permissive environment that you see in Iraq and Afghanistan and bring, bring more ordnance to bear without compromising the amount of fuel you have. So even though the fuel or the mission changes, you can see compared to any other fourth generation airplane, the F-35 is going to bring more ordnance, even in a permissive life, as well as in a stealth configuration. So when you add that up, that gives you a huge change in the aerodynamics of the airplane. The, the first, as you see in the upper left hand, is the range. So when you take fifth generation engine technology, advanced 30 years behind uh, what we did to an F-16, and then you put 18,000 pounds of fuel, 
And then you mount it internally to the airplane, you get a huge increase in the range capability, whether it's time on station or to reach a target further along. Finally, in, in, when that fuel, or when, that, uh, when the engine tanks, when the bombers, the jammers, when everything's not carried external to the airplane, you're actually able to accelerate faster and you're able to reach a high supersonic speed faster. The F-16, I will tell you, in a slick configuration is a Mach 2.0 airplane. But the configuration I showed you prior, prior a combat configuration with bombs, tanks, and, and missiles, that's a subsonic airplane. That same configuration in an F-35, that stealth configuration, is a Mach 1.6 airplane every day, all day. And we're seeing that in the flight test today. And then finally, even the ability to, to, to fight, the ability to accelerate, and the ability to achieve that high MOX uh, are really in a combat configuration. That's what an F-35 is built for, and that's what it's demonstrating today. Also, we, we have the ability to carry all sorts of mission systems and, and capabilities, and I wanted to take you through some of them today. And, and it's really not magic that Lockheed Martin came up with this. It's a $50 billion investment in the development of the F-35. That brings you new capabilities, new sensors, and builds on already advanced F-16, F-15, F-18 technology, and really adds through investment new capabilities. First is the radar, APG-81 IESA radar, no longer a mechanically scanned. Imagine a thousand different radars operating simultaneously. And no longer is it a radar, but it's a multifunction array because the sensitivity of the radar makes it your best ESM sensor. Not only in the, the, uh, the DB, but also in the angle and ranging capabilities of, of that uh, sensor. We also have a DAS system, distributed aperture system. Think six IR cameras mounted on the external of the airplane. Uh, and that allows a 360 degree spherical coverage of the, airplane, of the aircraft. And, and it's able to do about three functions. First, it sees any missile fired at the airplane. IR missile, passively guided missile, and sees the rocket motor plume, sees the radiant heat rise, and able to alert the pilot to it. It also sees any ground fire, surface air missile fire, and it's able to see the point of origin, triangulate back, and give you a detailed quality data to, to where it originated. So you can go back and target that missile. It also gives you a night vision capability. Um, in mid-wave IR, so now the pilot, wherever he looks, even through the aircraft, because those sensors are mounted external to the airplane, gives them the ability to see at night. And again, it's not a night vision goggle, it's a mid-wave IR, so it's not dependent on moon illumination or overcast. And that dis DAS system is, is mounted on every single airplane. We also have an, a, uh, an ESM system or RWR system, and it's linked with the radar to give you a emitter locating. And, and that, that gives you an order of magnitude better than what you're seeing in fourth generation airplanes. So we're talking about plus or minus one to, or two degrees in, in azimuth for any threat origination, and we're talking about plus or minus a degree in range uh, capabilities of, of the airplane. Go to the next. So that emitter locating allows you to isolate a threat at, at, uh, at much greater ranges than aircraft are specifically built for today and then find it not only in azimuth but in range. And now you can put another sensor on it. And, and that sensor comes from the electronic support measures or it comes from the electrical targeting system built into the, the airplane from the beginning. Four times the resolution of current generation of pods that are out there, lantern pods, AT flares, or, or uh, sniper pods. Uh, and it also has an IRST, infrared search and track, an IR radar, if you will, be able to scan for, for fighters out there. So you have not only the active capabilities of the radar, but the passive capabilities of the IR system. And then you have network conductivity. So we bring, obviously, Link 16 capabilities. We bring VMF to the ground-based capabilities, SINGAR capabilities, but we bring something called MADL, Multifunction Advanced Data Link. This is in a stealth uh, airplane. You have to have the capability to communicate in a point-to-point -point manner. In other words, low probability of intercept, low probability of detection. 
and then you've got to move massive amounts of data between the airplanes. And that's what the, the metal is. It's a, think of it more as a laser to your wingman, to the other F-35s, and the megabytes per second of information transferring it on, on a uh, continual basis. So whatever my, my radar is showing, my wingman sees the same thing. And matter of fact, in the four or eight plane when you go flying, it fuses the data to the best available information. So angle tracks from the IR system, range from the radar, um, other aspects, interrogation, if you will, fused to a single contact with the lowest uncertainty volume and the best capabilities, all for the pilot. And then off link to the rest of the National uh, Command Authority. Next, please. So that gives you these, these different capabilities. So you have synthetic aperture radar that we'll talk about in, in a little bit. The, the ability to give you a, 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 a one foot resolution at a combat range, at standoff ranges. Um, the sensor capability and the processing capability allows you to use auto target recognition and auto target locating. So you're looking at that radar display in the upper left you may not be able to pick out the surface to air threats, but the computer can, and the algorithms built in can, and it can ID it and then pass weapons quality targets track to you, your wingman, and the rest of the National Command Authority through the weather. We also have ground moving target indications. We're able to track anything doing more than a, than a few knots at, at combat significant ranges. And then we talked about the ESM systems, the sensitivity the emitter locating is better than airplanes, fourth generation specifically built for that purpose. And then the DAS system, again, this is that IR system that allows you, with the EOT system, to, to give you surface tracks, to, to give you um, the ability to ID tanks at double digit ranges, the ability to stand off and drop laser guided bombs and other, other capabilities, all built into a single package of the F-35. In the air-to-air -air re re regime, uh, what the stealth and all of these sensors give you is a whole change in how you fight. Uh, when, when I was doing air-to-air -air in a, in a uh, fourth generation airplane, we were looking at about the same ranges in missiles. Uh, we were looking at about the same capabilities in the radar, and we were really surviving on tactics and training. Uh, there was really no discernible uh, technology advantage against the threat out there at that time. With F-35, you get a huge change. First, fourth generation are there. Even though we reduced the signature of it, they still see that they still see up, saw us at their max ranges, and we saw them at their max ranges, and we were all shooting based on tactics and training. Now, with F-35, that that lower signature gives you simply a, a first look, first shot, first kill before that that adversary even knows where you are or where, where it is and only if it's designed in from the beginning. So, again, this is the, 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 the status quo, if you will, today. They see you at the same time you see them, if you go to the next. Um, and, and now what F-35 brings is, is really a game-changing capability in, in air-to-air. In air-to-ground, it's built upon the sensors and the stealth. So that same stealth is transferred in the air-to-ground regime but now you add on, again, all this development effort, all these advanced sensors in the airplane from the beginning, and you build upon an upgrade capability where all the partners, uh, where all the participants in the program, the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy, U.S. Marine Corps, Israel, eight partner countries, Japan, and, and the follow-on international partners contribute to a single pot of money and expand the capability to each and every uh, operator of the airplane. So it builds upon itself and it builds because of the economies of scale and the contributions of all participants. And when you look at it compared to the threat or any other airplane out there today, whether it be the, the RF active, the IR sources, as well as other sources out there, there's really no comparison in the starting point. And with a production profile that goes out to 2037, they're going to continue to build for years and years to come. So it's an investment of more than 30 years plus in the production profile, and it's investment in, co in, uh, in the economies of scale and the build in the airplane. 
So it allows the airplane to do much more than just air to air and air to ground. Think about it in, in the ISR portion. All those sensors I, I showed you, imagine what a JSTARS picture looks like in GMTI when you're standing 300 miles away from a threat. What's the IR picture of, of, a, uh, of a compass call, a rivet joint, the ESM picture? What, what do those look like 300 miles away? There's physics limitations in that. Now imagine 3,100 F-35s or, or, a, or an eight plane of, of uh, Israeli F-35s penetrating a denied access uh, airspace because of its stealth, using next generation technology to look at areas of interest and then offloading it to, to other uh, national command authorities. That's a different ISR platform than, than uh, a fighter has been in, in the past. And only F-35 really has this capability and investment for years to come in the future. An electronic attack, we didn't talk much, but, but the electronic attack capabilities in the F-35 are better than fourth generation electronic attack capabilities in the bandwidth that it operates. It does that through um, different technologies built into to the, uh, the radar. It does that as you look for the U.S. Marine Corps, it's going to replace its F-35Bs, or excuse me, its EA-6Bs with baseline F-35Bs. That's the inherent electronic attack capabilities built in the airplane from the beginning. Next, please. So it, it, it's not that legacy airplanes can't do some of those missions. It's just they lack a lot of the building blocks that, that uh, are there in the F-35. They lack stealth. They lack sensor fusion. They lack the ability to communicate uh, with, without uh, being uh, exposed in those environments. And, and certainly whether the aerodynamic performance or the, the different uh, sensor performance of the airplane, they just haven't been invested in today, nor is there a growth path for them really in the future. So this is not my slide, it's the U.S. Air Force's slide. When you look at it compared to what you have, even in the baseline F-35 when it, when it delivers, in a comparison against fourth gen, whether it's in the air-to-air -air environment, the ISR or reconnaissance environment, or the strike environment, it really gives you an order of magnitude better than what's out there today. And it does it in a, in a manner that uh, is different. Um, that allows for a, a different capability than you, you've seen in other airplanes. So I'd like to take you through a scenario uh, of trying to put those building blocks together uh, and, and what it means. So uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, you have a denied access environment. Double-digit SAMs, uh, advanced fourth-generation airplanes, um, mobile surface-to-air missiles, uh, tactical mobile SAMs. Um, this is the threat of, of any state actor today, and, and it's, it's actually probably the easiest investment uh, for them to, to put up a denied access environment. For fourth gen, th this is not something that uh, uh, is really uh, easy to do. Um, as, as we looked at this environment, even in Iraq or, or Bosnia, this was a massive rollback campaign. Um, I, I, you know, in the strikes I ran, just one strike in Iraqi freedom, we fired 100 harm missiles downrange. And after the strike, we couldn't come up with a single harm missile that hit its target, probably because those emitters were not up. So it, what changes with F-35, and just one build, uh, Carl, it, is it shrinks down those surface-to-air missile and gun. They don't, they don't uh, uh, disappear entirely, but it makes them manageable. And the ESM system allows you to locate it within a very tiny uh, area and capability. So if you go one build, first would be in, a, in an air-to-air -air environment. So that first look, first shot, first kill allows you to sweep the fighters out without a dedicated air-to-air -air, uh, set of fighters. Uh, and if you look at that, that the capability against them, only F-35 provides really a, an order of magnitude better than, than what we've seen for other fighters. Go to the next. So, you know, you, you're able to accomplish this mission not only in a one-to-one -one, uh, where, where you're, where you're uh, equally matched or equal in numbers, but you're able to accomplish it because you're stealth, 
we are outnumbered in the number of airplanes you have. You can support numerous misses. Imagine you're out there in an F-35 formation, no longer one mile abreast, or one mile abreast, but we're seeing 25 miles between F-35 single uh, airplanes. Because of that DAS system, because of the data links, you're able to maintain that support and capabilities. And now, you're able to penetrate these airspaces and you can find these double-digit SAMs. And, and if you start up in the upper left, even through the weather, with a, a SAR radar, you're able to take pictures of the area. Now, I, I couldn't look at this map right here, and this is actual maps off, off F-35. I couldn't find the double-digit SAMs on that. But the radar can, the algorithms can, and not only can it, can it locate it, ID it to the pilot that can provide a weapons quality to track to it because it goes up through the different uh, resolutions and then is able through algorithms to ID a tank, an APC, double digit SAMs, other ones, and pass it to the pilot. Only F-35 can penetrate that airspace, ID it, and now you're able to destroy it. The trick it's able to do in it is the ESM system. So build the next one. For the ESM system, you use electronic attack to inhibit the, the radar, and the ESM system allows you to find that, that mobile threat passively and put it within that certainty volume of the radar. So you find it passively, radar goes on through the weather, tactically significant ranges, and now you have found the double digit, digit mobile SAM threat. You're, you're passively able to stay away from it from the stealth, and now you can target it. And only F-35 has this capability. So when you do that, now you're able to employ weapons. And, and those weapons can be a, a, a large variety uh, of weapons. And, and hit targets, call it strategic targets, and hold them at risk. Only F-35 is able to do that through the weather. 18,000 pounds of ordnance, able to use the radar, the DAS, the EOT system, even the ESM system to do that. That's how you're able to come up with numerous sorties where every shooter is a sensor. So every airplane has that electronic attack capability. Every airplane has that ISR capability. Every airplane has the, the strike capability that you see. So when you add it up, to me, air to air, air to ground, but the constraints on, on uh, call it budgets today, are, are still very difficult. So in a symmetrical warfare, you have to be efficient, and only F-35 really is able to do it efficiently. Sure, the, I think fourth generation can hit that scenario, probably can, through a massive rollback campaign, numbers of airplanes, standoff jammers and AWACS, other items, but the, the cost is pretty prohibitive. But if you add it up to the next one, only an F-35 in a symmetrical contact can do it with just low numbers of airplanes. So it's able to go out with four airplanes, an electronic attack capability, an ESM capability, an air-to-air -air capability, a strike capability, and obviously an ISR capability. That's unique to the F-35, and that's the idea behind the airplane. So as I look at the, the different attributes that we're looking at, air-to-ground, um, it, it only, you know, to me, only F-35 deals with the deed threat, only F-35 can deal with a mobile threat, in double-digit SAMs, air-to-air, -air, we have to have an advantage uh, and stay away from a, B a within visual range contract. And that's F-35 in its stealth gives you that beyond visual range. And finally, the budget constraints we're dealing with allows only a multi-role con uh, contract like F-35 to, to deal with all these missions in an efficient manner. Um, we just don't have the resources to dedicate an air-to-air -air platform, an air-to-ground platform, an ISR platform, every sensor has to be a shooter, and that's really the F-35. So with that, thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate that. Uh, Steve? Uh, just uh, want to give you uh, a book about uh, some of the Israeli characteristics. It is called the Startup Nation. So thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you.